let's get a start demo first of dotnet 9 hybrid cache which is newly added in dotnet 9 and here i just build one application in blazor app and implement that dotnet 9 hybrid cache and if you see once i click that weather forecast now see it is calling api and get the data but once i go back that home and once i click once again in that weather forecast this time see it is not calling an web api like uh, like api call it is directly actually getting the data same whatever you know first time data in our hybrid cache they storing the data and getting back to our here so we can reduce our api call which is a new feature in this dotnet uh, hybrid cache so see uh, still again if i click that uh, weather forecast there is a no api call because i just added a uh, one uh, one flag over here if any api call so that will be actually uh, add that you know api call message and it will add it over here so as of now see uh, how many times actually i will just uh, click the weather forecast there is no api call only getting data from our local cache which is a hybrid cache and it is actually we have a default time setting which uh, minimum i think 60 seconds so once that uh, 60 seconds cross then it will call again uh, that api call and get the data again store that hybrid cache and then will be loaded over here so let me wait you know now see now that time got expired now again that api called uh, calling that api get the data and store that uh, binding the data right and once i go back in weather forecast again click that now see this time there is a no api call right so that i will show you how we can actually implement uh integrate actually in our blazor application or any application in dotnet 9 if, if you have api if, if you have mbc application so you can just integrate that hybrid cache to make a better performance in your application so now let's get start uh, implementation so before implementation i'm especially recommend if you first time visit my channel so go to my channel which is dotnet real world example and here that many many other section you can just learn it correlated dotnet python and other you know, front and back end and a clean architecture everything actually as a full stack developer and there's a uh, another uh, special recommendation over here see uh, like this right so see this is that another section which is dotnet 9 uh, we have a new feature which is hybrid app with the web app right so also you can just go to that one and learn it so now get a start so first what i need to do let me open a visual studio which is 2022 with the latest one and click create a new project i'll show you the from scratch and open any a blazor web application next hybrid cache so let me add a name uh dotnet 9 blazor hybrid app cache okay and just change that uh, location and create a next and create a project so i just created a one project which is dotnet 8 actually so that is also fine which will support it because that uh, hybrid cache version is dotnet 9 but uh, i observe that will fine but if it is not fine then definitely we will increase our version but let me check like if dotnet 8 and uh, we have a dotnet 9 that is work working or not right so first what you need to do you have to just adding a one package so that package would be go to that uh, new get package and look for that hybrid cache so see this is a hybrid cache make sure it will available as of now in this pre-release right so if you uncheck that pre-release you will not able to get that right because it is a pre-release version so that's why you have to just check this pre-release version and just store this install that cache uh, this package so once you install now go back to here and go to that expand over here and go to that component for example weather component right so in this weather component we have a data right so suppose for example see this is our data this is a look like is a getting a in memory data but yeah it could be an a uh, that call can happen from that api as well right so i'll show you from as of now this is a, the api call and get the data and store in a hybrid cache how we can do that right so for that what i can do i can simply i have to just you know create another method uh, to remove actually we have to create a one method over here or ideally you can just use this one inside that cache as well but that uh, for readability 
the make a readability so i will use uh, create another method which will return all that for the weather forecast data right so first what i need to do simply i let me create a method so this is the method name and this is simple nothing it is just returning an for weather forecast you know uh, weather forecast array over here and here i just remove this code this to this right and it's simply written and so once you return now these two things is missing so let me bring back these two lines as well so once you get this line okay so now actually our method is get ready right and it is returning data so it could be an api call inside that also you can just call an api call but yeah as of now i'll show you uh we can assuming this is a api call okay so once you get the data uh, we actually created the method which will returning that data right and once you get the data now we have to inject that hybrid cache uh, class you know abstract class so it's very simple uh, what i need to do i just simply inject so calling that hybrid cache this is abstract class and using that namespace bring that namespace it is coming from this you know caching hybrid and here we can just make it a variable name so that we can use it so once it's done now we can go to go to use this this method right so go to here and here simply i'll just uh, call there's a many method actually over here for example underscore cache c there is a like get or create like it will create and get uh, that uh, cache memory right and also if you want to remove so you can remove it you, if you want to remove by the tag so also you can remove it and also uh, if you want to set some uh, cache memory also you can set forcefully right so there is a many method actually so what i will do i will use that this time uh, this guy create an all and this is a nice flexibility also if you pass that entity and whatever collections right so that also will be uh, deserialized so that also so for example so i want to uh, deserialize you know this method because i want to call this method right so this method will be returning this response and then if you you know start this method so there is a few overload method as well right so see there is a method overload actually uh there we have uh, some parameter like we have to pass some key so as of now i just keep it uh key for example it is a weather forecast right so let me add that as a weather forecast as a key and then you can see the second parameter is second parameter is function right is a callback function so what i can do i have to just call as our method over here so what is our method my method name is this guy which will returning the data so directly actually there is a flexibility in this you know hybrid cache which will allow to call directly your method so quickly i'll just calling this guy uh, for using over here uh, for example i can just assign over here async async and then make it a name for example cancel and use the lambda expression and here i can use that await and what is that our method so this is my method so simply call this method and we are good to go right so see now we are calling that method so what we will do in this uh, cache method right so it will just create get or create a method call it will just they will check okay if that uh, now already we have a data uh, if it is a first time so it will just create a key along with that their data and that return back if second time is call so it will check okay if it is already there the data so it will not call it is just getting the same data um, from that cache and return back so here i will just use that await right and simply i can just bind this data to over here because it is returning this data so simply i just close and this guy now see and also let me bring that new line so that you can see so now see it is very clear and clean code right so simply you can call that get or create method and pass that key and your method so save it and run it so now we are good to go to run but there is a one issue see we are injected in this hybrid 
abstract class right so if you intrinsic definitely we have to resolve the dependency so uh, there is a extension method also they provide in hybrid cache that we can just resolve the dependencies over here so simply we can use that guy builder dot services builder dot services dot hybrid add hybrid cache so this is the default extension method but we have uh, many many other uh, also uh, options over here that we can set it over here but yeah that will will do later but yeah, let's see first uh, how is working so run this application and one thing actually i missed so see once i click uh, this weather forecast i don't know right uh, actually while debugging we can check it okay it is calling a uh, api or not right so that also i can uh, now adding on the top for that and a message like okay if we api call so that will be prompt on the top if it is not api call so that will be not prompt right so let me close that and quickly just add uh, in this weather forecast here let me add an uh, one message so go down here let me add a one variable and that variable could be for example uh, variable name is like that okay and we just store this variable in this uh, once i entered over here right so in here just we have to that clean just cleaned over here but once i call this api in this here we can set it that message as like uh, no it is api call so that we can make sure it is api call or not right but don't worry about that i'll just put a debugger point i'll show you how is actually working that hybrid cache if it is already stored right and let me add that uh, that message as well over here for example on the top right and let me change to this to this okay now we are good to go and run this application and see in action and now our application got running right and once i click the first time in weather forecast now see api is called right and once i go back to home page and click again now see that api call is not happen right that's why it's not prompting but don't worry uh, go back over here and uh, let me put the debugger point let that why i show you how actually it's working so click on that here which is that on load and this is that api call right which is we are calling inside this cache so let me just hit that uh, breakpoint click on that weather forecast so once i weather forecast calling now see it is calling on initialize method and in this on initialize method i'll just trying to debug f10 f10 and f10 and finally it's call back so it is not calling that api because already it is stored right so let me close that so that uh, because no other next 60 second it will already restore but i'll show you okay let me show one more time click on that a debugging point is hitting and if i f10 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 and this time see it is calling this method so once i f10 now see first time calling so it is calling that api right and api also just setting this variable and returning the data and data will set over here and return back to over here now that's why it's calling api call okay so now second time if i go back to home and click that weather forecast and call f10 f10 now see this time again it's call back over here once i f10 now see it is written back to over here it is not calling to over here because already we have a data in this key that's why whatever key has a data that returning back directly over here and return to over here now see it is data already there right and run and this flag also it is not there but data is over there right so like this way also if i use uh, for example i'll just use another instance that another instance also work the same like if i calling that this guy and just continue see this api call is not happening because cache already stored with this multiple you know parallel request as well so that i'll show you uh parallel request how it's actually working so if i stop again okay let me show you that parallel parallel request how is working so run this application one more time and run is create a two instance okay and now click this one okay and go back and now 
go back to here and click again this one okay now this see do two request i send a parallelly over here so once i have 10 now see this one request come over here it's bait and then another request again come here right and then one of 10 and calling this guy so see this two time calling but it is bent in only one time so it is go here return back the data and finally call back over here so see it is calling here and this is second instance it's already calling api that's why it is not see this is the difference actually this is a nice example see two instance i send the two requests parallel and one is calling that api another one is not calling api because that already have a in our cache so that also actually uh, maintaining so that is the beauty of that hybrid cache right so this is a nice feature which is introduced in dotnet night and now one more thing actually i would like to share there's a uh, many many things actually we can do from here for example this guy right so in this uh, create and over here there's a other also for example stop that there's a many other options over here we can use it for example use this guy see there's a yeah see the third option is options so what are the options so that options actually uh if you want to set some timing and all right so that also you can just set it over here for example this guy right so this is entry point and using that hybrid options and we can set it see expiration time so whatever that expiration time you can set it over here and what is that local cache expiration time you can set it and then finally you can just use this option to over here right and then we have what other options over here uh, the parameter is tag right so you can just edit tag as well so if you want to add some tag so for example i have a list of tag over here so that let me add over here so i just create a list of tag and the tag also i can just put it in this over here and then finally the last option is over here that cancellation token suppose your method is a uh, using that cancellation token so you can just use that cancellation token as well for example like that and using that new as of now i don't have a cancellation token but yeah you can just pass if you you are getting your cancellation token in your method so you can just use that cancellation token over here as well so there is a many options you can just use it as well as uh, i'll show you uh, one more things uh, in this program.cs well see this is that uh, um, extension method right so in this extension method also we have many options right so that let me show you what are the options over here so using that options create that options lambda function and uh, use that option dot c maximum length over there which we can set it over here then if i max dot so there is a maximum length maximum payload so you can set that map payload and also whatever that option we have set it over here right so same same things actually we can do itself in this extension method as well so there is a, a way like option dot a default right and default options and here you can just create a new uh, that options and in this options you can just yeah see that expiration time which you can set it over here and as well as uh, you can set your that other options as well right so like that and then let me set that local time set okay so like this way actually you can set uh, more configured your you know extension method so that's all for this session and uh, have a nice day thank you and don't forget to like subscribe and share